everyone, it's Justin again. In this lesson, you're going to learn about the measures of the interior angles of a polygon. There are two tasks for you to complete in your notes template to get you prepared for this video. If you've not completed the two tasks already, pause the video and do them now. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to find interior angle measures of a polygon. First, we'll develop the formula for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. Next, we'll complete an example problem using this formula, and then we'll develop the formula for one interior angle of a regular polygon. And finally, we'll complete two example problems using that formula. At this point, you've already completed tasks one and two in your notes template. Let's see how this went for you and give you a chance to check your work. Here are the pictures from your notes template, and I also wrote the number of sides in each polygon underneath. That'll come in handy shortly. We were told to choose a vertex on each of these polygons. Don't worry, you didn't have to choose the same vertices as me. Then we were told to connect the chosen vertices to all the other non-adjacent vertices in the polygon, like this. This is called drawing the diagonals. Notice how we don't have to draw diagonals connecting to every vertex because the vertices on either side of the ones we chose were already connected by the sides of the polygon. What this did is split up the angles inside each polygon. So they became the angles in the triangles we just created. Even if you chose a different vertex to draw your diagonals from, you would still have the same number of diagonals as me and the same number of triangles inside each polygon. Pause the video now to make sure that you have the same number of diagonals and triangles as me and make any changes that you may need to. Underneath each of these polygons, I'm going to write how many triangles we created within each of them. In the quadrilateral, we created two triangles by drawing a diagonal. In the pentagon, we created three triangles. If we keep going, we would see that the number of triangles continues to increase by one, just as the number of sides also increase by one. Then you likely moved on to task two. We could transfer the number of triangles we found into this column. We could also write the names for each kind of polygon in this column. Then, to calculate the sum of the interior angles in each polygon, we can multiply the number of triangles by 180 degrees, since that's how many degrees are in each triangle. You may be thinking, couldn't I put more triangles in the polygon and not only the ones I found by drawing diagonals from one of the vertices? Like, take this pentagon for example. What's stopping me from drawing in another diagonal and making two more triangles? Well, this would create four more angles that weren't initially part of our polygon. And since those four angles form a circle, they would add up to be 360 extra degrees, which is equivalent to the angle measures of those two extra triangles we made. Basically, we don't want to create any new angles. We are only trying to break apart the angles within our polygon and relate them to something we already know about. Thus, the three triangles here, since we know each of those contains 180 degrees. This may seem like a lot at first, but there's a pattern that can help us remember this. Do you notice the pattern between the number of sides in the polygon and the number of triangles? How do we get from four to two? And from five to three? Does the pattern you're thinking of also work with six and four? Seven and five? and eight and six. Hopefully you figured out that the number of triangles will always be two less than the number of sides. That's where our n minus two comes from. And there's a reason that this happens. Remember when you were drawing diagonals from one vertex to the others? You didn't have to draw diagonals to the vertices that were on either side of the vertex you chose. 
because you would just be tracing over two sides of the polygon. Anyways, we can generalize this by saying that if our polygon has n sides, then it will have n minus two triangles contained within it. This means we can represent the number of sides column with a generic variable, n, and the number of triangles column with two less than the number of sides, or n minus two. Then to get to the final column, we always took the number of triangles and multiplied it by 180. Therefore, we would take n minus two and multiply it by 180. This rule does apply to polygons with any number of sides. So if you want to just write n gone here, you certainly can. But just remember that we do have more specific names for the polygons with 12 sides or less. This right here is the general formula for calculating the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. We did it. We found the formula without it being given to us. Now let's use that formula to solve an example problem. This says to find the sum of the interior angles of the decagon shown. That means we're finding the sum of all of these angles. We could pick a vertex and draw in all the diagonals that come from that vertex, and that would show us how many triangles make up these angles. And then we multiply the number of triangles by 180, or we could use the formula that we figured out a moment ago. Pause the video and try using the formula we created to solve this. We have to substitute 10 for n, since decagons have 10 sides. 10 minus 2 is 8, and multiplying that by 180 gives us 1,440 degrees for the sum of all of these interior angles. This formula can be very handy, especially for polygons with lots of sides. Could you imagine drawing triangles in on a 25-gon? You'd have 23 triangles to keep track of. Now that we understand how to find the sum of the interior angles of a polygon using a formula, and where the formula came from, let's take this one step further. Let's look at an example from earlier in the lesson. I could pick any polygon to illustrate this, but let's go with a pentagon. We know that the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon adds up to 540 degrees. This means that any pentagon will have interior angles that add up to 540 degrees, even if the pentagon is irregular, like these. But if the polygon is regular, we can take our formula one step further. Since all these angles add up to 540 degrees, and they're all congruent to each other, how do you think we could figure out just one of these interior angle measures? Take a moment to pause the video and try to figure out the measure of one of these interior angles, knowing that all of them add up to 540. Did you divide 540 by the number of angles? In that case, that would mean we divide by 5. And this gives us 108 degrees for each interior angle. Let's see if you can generalize this. Here is our formula for the sum of the interior angles. What can we do to this formula so it will give us the measure of a single interior angle when our polygon is regular? Remember, the angles are all the same in a regular polygon. Since the number of angles is the same as the number of sides, we can use n to represent either of them. So if a shape has n angles, we can divide what we got in this formula by n to find one interior angle. But remember, the most important thing here is that this only works with regular polygons, because all of the angles have to be the same. So let's say that you're asked to solve this problem. It says to find the measure of one interior angle in the decagon shown. Can you solve this? This is not a friendly question. It's trying to see if you're paying attention and really understand what's going on. Maybe you jumped right in and started substituting 10 into this formula because this polygon has 10 sides. But wait, 
something's wrong. This formula only works for regular polygons. All the sides and angles in this polygon must be congruent, and they're clearly not. So we can't solve this problem. But let me change things up a little for you. Now we have a regular decagon, so all the angles are the same. Now try to solve this. Pause the video here and give it a try. Since the decagon has 10 sides, we can substitute 10 for n into the equation. Then we can simplify the numerator of the fraction and divide by 10 to get 144. This means that each angle in this regular decagon, or any regular decagon for that matter, has an interior angle measure of 144 degrees. Now you know how to find the sum of the interior angles of a polygon, and even developed this formula all on your own using triangles. And you know how to find one interior angle of a regular polygon. See you next time!